Hi guys, welcome to my F1 2020 predictions video. Instead of doing the usual 1st to 20th and driver stand-ins, I thought I'd get an even bigger crystal ball out and pick my own criteria, so let's begin. First thing that I've chosen to predict is the biggest surprise of the season, and for this I've picked both a team and a driver. For my team pick, I've chosen Racing Point, or whatever Kimi Raikkonen thinks it's called. This may be an unusual pick for some, However, my main reasoning for this is that it's the first year of the Lawrence Stroll money coming into effect. They obviously had a lack of cash in 2018 after the VJ Malia fiasco when it was called Force India, which hindered the development of their 2019 car, hence their relatively poor season compared to what they managed to achieve in the past with a tight budget. However, now they have had the money and a full season to fully develop their 2020 car, I now expect for them to be very competitive. With the right resources in place, I can definitely see them battling with McLaren and Renault over fourth place in the World Constructors' Championship, just as they used to when they were Force India, when we saw Perez taking advantage from the mistakes of others and securing the odd podium. Now I know that Lance Stroll is seen as a bit of a pay driver in the F1 community, but his junior record results are fantastic. Whilst if the car is good, he should be able to qualify higher and use his incredible starts to propel himself up the grid. For my driver pick for biggest surprise, and although this is a bit of a left field pick but hear me out, it's Sebastian Vettel. We all know Seb had a poor 2019 and second half of 2018 by his high standards. I can name at least five mistakes he made in that time alone. However, I also think that in race pace he was very good, and he did outrace Leclerc, even if he did not score as many points during the season. I think if his heart is still in the sport, I can see him having one more season at the top level. If Ferrari nail their design philosophy and deliver a car with high downforce and a stable rear end, this will suit Vettel's driving style perfectly. However, there are currently rumours circulating in Italy, saying that Ferrari have messed up their car design, but it wouldn't surprise me if they're pulling a Mercedes and bluffing. We all know that Vettel in a high downforce car is a force to be reckoned with. Just look at him in the Red Bull era between 2010 and 2013. If Ferrari can deliver the car and Vettel stays error free, I can see him being back to his best and surprising all of those people that think that he should not be in the Ferrari seat for 2021. The next category for my 2020 predictions is the biggest disappointment, and like before, I'll choose both a team and a driver. For the team, I'm picking Renault. To be honest, I've had enough of them, and specifically Cyril and Beatable, bigging themselves up each year, only for them to spectacularly underdeliver on those promises. I think this is the year where it will finally implode. They are under a huge amount of pressure and will have to get it right this season as they now have a new CEO at the helm and the future of the team could be in doubt if their results don't improve. Another reason why I think there will be a disappointment is a certain driver called Esteban Ocon. In my opinion, I don't think he is as good of a driver as Nico Hulkenberg, who he replaced, and I can even see some friction with Danny Rick just as there was when he was teammates with Sergio Perez at Force India. I could see Renault slipping even further down the grid behind Racing Point with their stroll money coming into effect, and I really fear for the team as this will now be the fourth year of their five-year plan where they said they'd be challenging for podiums and wins. To make matters even worse, I could see Ricardo jumping ship and moving to a top team if there's a space available. Moving on to my prediction for the most disappointing driver of 2020, and the answer is Danny Kvyat. Obviously, I could have gone for someone like Roman Grosjean, but I wanted to make things harder for myself, as I usually do. I'm a huge fan of Kvyat, and he's been treated very poorly by Red Bull in the past. However, he's shown himself to be a great driver, particularly in the 2015 Red Bull and in achieving a fantastic podium in Germany last year with Toro Rosso. However, after Hockenheim, his form dropped in comparison to Gasly, who was demoted back to the team from Red Bull at the Belgian Grand Prix. Gasly outshone him from then on, even scoring a brilliant second place in Brazil to secure Honda's first 1-2 as an engine supplier since 1991. Kvyat only came 10th, a poor result considering the number of incidents in the race. I think Gasly will continue his run of form and dominate Kvyat through 2020, and knowing how Helmut Marko has treated him before, it wouldn't surprise me if he loses his seat at the end of the season. The only silver lining for him is the lack of Red Bull Junior drivers that could possibly take his seat for 2021. And now for the main prediction, the Driver and Constructors Champions. For the Drivers' Championship, I don't think Lewis will match Schumacher's record and win title number 7. Instead, I think it will be Max Verstappen. I know it's a big shout, but my main reason for this is Mercedes' preparations for 2021. As it's the last year of the current regulations and there aren't any major rule changes, I think the order of the grid would be similar to that of last year. Max was in the form of his life last year and it can only get better as he matures. Whilst it'll also be Red Bull's best opportunity to win a title as teams like Mercedes put their resources into next season. On the engine side of things, with Honda improving each year, I can only see Red Bull moving forwards. The only thing that I can see stopping Max becoming a serious title challenger 
is a lack of experience in such a pressurised environment. Drivers like Lewis Hamilton have plenty of experience under their belt in long title battles, and although Max has improved mentally in many areas over the last few years, there are the odd slip-ups such as his antics in Mexico qualifying last year. My pick for the Constructors' Championship is based off the most important factor, reliability, and that's the main reason why I'm choosing Mercedes. As we expect the top three teams to be incredibly close, I think that reliability will be the determining factor in who wins the championship, and over the last few years, Mercedes have been bulletproof, whether it's their car not having many mechanical failures, or their drivers, especially Lewis Hamilton, not making any mistakes. I also think that the other teams will inadvertently help them win the championship. Ferrari could implode with Vettel and Leclerc battling out together, whilst Alex Albon isn't yet at that level of the drivers in the top three teams. Maybe Bottas is an exception to that rule. And he's a clear number two, so we may see him being put on the Kimi Raikkonen strategy we saw at Ferrari a few years ago. Either way, the consistency that has made Mercedes arguably the greatest Formula 1 team we've ever seen will most likely continue, and it wouldn't surprise me if they win another Constructors' Championship, even if they are prioritising development of their 2021 car. So there we have it. Those were some of my predictions for the upcoming 2020 F1 season. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, subscribe if you're new and you want to see some more F1 related content like this. And I want to hear your predictions for 2020 and any other ideas you'd like to see on the channel. Anyway, hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next one.